Bingo! Hi, everybody. Last Outrider coming back at you with Seeker of Impossible Knowledge. Across a thousand worlds, Ariman has sought the keys to save what he has already destroyed. The scars of his obsession have made his name a curse in the mouths of humans and Xenos alike. Scraps of lore, artifacts, both obscure and profane, and the occasional rare soul draws him like a raven to a corpse. To the Eldar, he is the carrion scribe who eats the souls of their dying race for secrets. To the inquisitors of the Ordo Malleus, he is the lightning rod which brings a storm of demons. Amongst the servants of chaos, he is a flame of power and trickery, as likely to burn those drawn to his light as to illuminate them. A master of subtle manipulation, Ariman has seeded cults on a hundred thousand worlds and built the desires of the powerful to achieve his ends. With conspiracies and plots spread across the galaxy, he coils between them, a puppet master pulling invisible strings. When such subtle means are impossible, he wages a sorcerer's war. Now, this is the part where it gets kind of crazy, because I'm going to comment on this afterwards forcing armies to kneel with visions of terror, shattering war machines with invisible forces and ripping the souls from mighty heroes. He knows the true names of nine times nine times nine demons and possesses pacts which can bring armies flocking to his calls. Worlds have burned at his command. Billions have fallen to the hunger of the warp, and reality has bled at the fury of his power. Okay, so let's look at that. I found this real interesting because if the way they're describing him here is true, and I believe it is, he is obviously stronger than, uh, you know, the Supreme Grandmaster of the Grey Knights. Hands down, with his one arm behind his back, he could just blow Grey Knights away. Listen, listen to what they're talking about there. You know, even, even, even Drago. They did, mastered, uh, uh, what, 666 words of power, the only one in the entire Grey Knight history. And Ahriman here, not even just a word of power, he's mastered nine times nine times nine demons' entire true names. I'm assuming that means he's able to speak them as well, which, if that's the case, Ahriman is fluent in Enuncia. If you don't know what that is, that's the language which creates reality with a word. So if you put all of that together, He's insanely powerful. And it gets better. Here's another little small snippet after it called The Book of Magnus. The Book of Magnus was created by the Primarch of the Thousand Sons during the Great Crusade. Written both by Magnus, his own hand, and the hands of mind-slaved serfs. It was the summation of his knowledge and wisdom. In the wake of the Thousand Suns' fall, the Book of Magnus became a book unbound by physical laws. The knowledge within its pages crawls as though alive and constantly changing, constantly growing, which you can interpret that as meaning the book itself is learning. If a mortal could open its pages twice, and still live, he would never find its contents to be the same. There have been several copies of the Book of Magnus, 
or at least it has manifested several times. Such is its warp-infused nature that it may be a single book existing in many places and times simultaneously. Ahriman possessed a copy of the Book of Magnus before his exile, and others are known to have existed. Callimachus, once scribed to Magnus the Red, fled the burning of Prospero with a partial copy. Others may exist, but if so, their mark on history has long been burnt away and consigned to oblivion. So this also gives you some other interesting hints. First, it goes back to what I said before. There's not going to be time travel because there's simply not going to be time. The Book of Magnus itself has shown that it can exist in multiple times and multiple, multiple locations in multiple forms at the same time in 40K. So there's some writing freedom for you. On top of that, if it can happen with this book, then it can happen with people and other items as well. So what else are we looking at? Oh, the other thing I was interested in is that so many people are writing books in 40K. And I wonder if this is just more of the sign of the times that Rick Priestley came up with the game back in the 1980s. You have to ask yourself, if he had come up with the game in 2015, would it be, I don't know, the video blog of Magnus? Or how about the, the collected emails of Rabut Gilliman? Hmm? The, the, the insane tweets of Conrad Cruz. How would that be? <laughs> um, it's just a thought. Uh, lots of books so far, though. I mean, we've got lots of books. Even the Emperor has a book, believe it or not. He wrote one. Uh, you, figure, you figure he might have been more useful if he did a video blog. But who knows? Until next time, what are we going to talk about next time? Dun, dun, dun. Dreams, wars, and bloodshed. There you go. One more thing, too. Think about this. Belakor, the first demon prince. If you, if you go and watch my video about him, he's described in almost the exact same way as Ahriman is described. That's just something to think about. I don't know if the two are connected, but it's just a pondering. What if Ahriman in the far, far future, past, or somewhere around anywhere, becomes the first demon prince. Or, I don't know. Until next time, bye. Hmm.